going to start with our module three, okay? And we call this module, module three. We, <laughs> we call this module paradigm shifts and how to build an organization, okay? Uh, one of the most important things that you must have is the right frame of mind, okay? Attitude, uh, I've seen this many, many times. Attitude determines altitude. Okay, I'm sure you've seen these uh, uh, motivational posters that carry this, and that's very, very true, not just in this business, but in every endeavor that you undertake. Your attitude, your strategy, your outlook on the business will determine how big uh, your organization will get. Okay? One of the keys to succeeding in this business is understanding and accepting that most traditional strategies and concepts are not always totally applicable in this business. Okay? Uh, many, we have in this room about 200, 220, 230 people, all of which, uh, all of you have come from your different fields of expertise, okay, and I'm sure you all have your training and your knowledge from the different uh, fields of business that you're involved with, and, and these are all great, okay, when you're, when you're, if you're doing those businesses, okay, but we have to accept that many, many times the strategies that you need to make this business work, okay, are different. Okay, fortunately, the strategies for this business are much simpler, but still you have to accept the fact that uh, it's different. If you were a basketball coach and you wanted your team to win, okay, you don't use basketball strategies for swimming, okay, and you don't use swimming strategies for basketball. If you're a basketball coach, you use basketball strategies. If you're a swimming coach, you use swimming strategies. You don't use badminton uh, strategies, let's say, for soccer. It's completely, completely different. It's all strategies, but different. Okay, we just have to accept the fact that in this business, okay, you need to change some of the traditional uh, mindsets that we have. Okay, and I'm not saying that these traditional mindsets don't work or that they're not worth anything. Okay, I'm just saying that for this business, they're not always applicable. Okay, for example, okay, in traditional business and the corporate world, one of the key thoughts is the more connections you have, or the more contacts you have, the better off you're going to be. Okay, haven't we heard that before? All right, if you are, let's, let's say if, I, if you were to start a restaurant, let's say in, I don't know, uh, let's say Germany. Okay, you just landed in Germany. Okay, and you, you know, you, you, you're an expert chef and you want to set up a restaurant, and you set up a restaurant in Frankfurt. You don't know a single person in Frankfurt. Okay, on the other hand, we have here, uh, Bernard, you know, who's lived in Frankfurt all his life, he has a web of connections all around in the different sectors of society, and he decides to put up a restaurant in Frankfurt. Which restaurant would you think uh, would have a higher probability of succeeding? Bernard's, right? Because he has more connections. Okay, more people will know about it right away, and more people will start coming to his restaurant. That's the traditional mindset. Okay, and remember, I use the word mindset because, you know, paradigm shifts means that you have to shift your mindset. Okay, and, this, and the paradigm shifts that I'm going to ask you to go through this afternoon are not going to be done only today. You're going to have to keep, you're going to have to keep going through them on a daily basis because it is difficult. It is difficult to get rid of a mindset. Okay, it's, it's something that you have to exercise every day. And since we were little... Uh, students, since we were young students, we were taught that. The more connections you have, the better off you're going to be. Okay, I know many, many parents that struggle hard and, and work very hard so that they can send their children to the best schools, not only for the education, but for the connections. Because let's face it, the world works with the buddy boy system, right? If you have somebody, somebody let's say, in a high position here and he's looking for people, he's like, oh, I, I went to school with this guy. You know, oh, he's a, he's a relative of, of, of my cousin, and my cousin says he's trustworthy. Okay, that's just the way it is. That's the way it is in the world. And that's why many, many parents work hard to send their children to the best schools for the, not just for the education, but also to establish connections, to establish a network. Okay? In sales, it's the same thing. The thought is, the more sales you make, the more money you earn. Okay? Which is great for sales. Okay, if you were doing a sales job, that's great. The more sales you make, and even in sales, when you, when, if you were a sales manager and you were recruiting uh, salesmen or potential salesmen, don't you look at also their network of connections and contacts, 
right? Oh, I want to get this guy. He knows half of Kuala Lumpur. Oh, yeah, this guy, you know, knows half of Singapore. He'd be great to set up a distributorship uh, of brake parts with this guy because he has a lot of connections, okay? And we, many, many times, people fail because they bring that thought into this business. Oh, I, and I hear it day in, day out. Okay, and for sure, many, many of you are going to have probably uh, fallen into that thought uh, process. Now, remember yesterday, I asked your permission if I could speak the truth. Okay, does that permission still hold for today? Yes. Okay, can I still speak the truth up here? You're not going to throw your glasses at me just because I say something that, uh, that uh, he, you know, because I've heard, Joe, he's talking about me. Okay, no, I'm not. I'm talking about things in general, okay? I've heard it many, many times, and I'm sure many, many people probably today still have the same uh, mentality when they go out trying to do their, their uh, Gold Quest business. Oh, I want to bring this guy in. This guy knows half of the neighborhood. Oh, I want to bring this guy. This guy is influential. Oh, this guy sits on top of this organization. You see what I'm saying? How many have fallen, have fallen prey to that mindset? We have a few very honest people here. <laughs> And, and hey, I, I fell into that uh, mindset too, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not excluding myself uh, from this list, okay? It's a very common thought because, again, that's the way we were brought up. Oh, I want to bring this guy in because he has many connections. I want to bring this guy in because he has many connections. If this business was only for people that were well-connected and had a lot of contacts, then it's, real, then it's not for everyone. Then what we talk about during our business presentations is a lie. Isn't the reason why this business is so attractive is because everybody can do it? Yes. But does everybody have a lot of connections? No. Okay? So we have to look for something else. We have to get rid of that, of, of that mindset. Okay? In this business, if you want to work, learn how to use what we call your circle of influence. Okay? It's supposed to be sphere of influence, but... It's harder to pronounce. You know, it's a sphere. Sometimes when I'm here doing the training, I'm here. Learn how to use your sphere of influence. So now it's circle of influence. Anyway, it's the same thing. Okay. Not everybody may have a thousand connections. Not everybody may have a network of 10,000 people under them. But everybody has a circle, circle of influence. Correct? When I say circle of influence, I'm talking about a group of people who trust what you say. There's about three people nodding their heads. The other people have no circle of influence. Will you not agree with me when I say this? Okay, when I came into this business, I brought in two people. Okay, I started out as a customer just like you guys. I, w I went into the mall and I saw, uh, uh, how do they call this, Ferdi Talentino. How, how many know Ferdi Talentino? How many have heard of him? Okay, you'll hear about him uh, more often in, in the near future. He's one of our top earners uh, in this business. I ran into him in the mall, okay, and uh, he was going down the escalator, I was walking, and, and you know, he was like, Joe, oh, hey, Ferdy, hi, hi, hi. And I go, you know, are you still with so-and-so company? I was involved with another guy. No, no, I've, I've already quit there. And he goes, you, you've quit? Because I was doing very, very well with that company. And uh, he goes, what are you doing now? Oh, Gold Quest. And he was like, oh, Joe, I'm in. And I go, wait. Can I show you the plan? No, no, I, he was going down the escalator. No, no, I can't. I'm in a hurry. Call me tomorrow. Let's meet. You show me the plan. But, you know, he's going down. He was going, count me in. Okay, I'm in. Don't leave me out. You know, and he goes down. And this is my first day. Okay. And I was like, wow, this is going to be easy. Man, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of money in this. No, this is true. Okay. My cousin, the same thing. I talked to my cousin. She had just gone through a very painful divorce. Okay, and she told me, Joe, I'm going to do this business. Okay, I don't know too much about it. I don't, I don't know this company very well, but because you're in, I'm in too. That's basically what she said. If you tell me it's good, I'm in. That's what I mean by circle of influence. Okay, I made, I made 15,000 US dollars my first four weeks uh, in this business. 14,800 something. Okay. Uh, I don't know the exact amount, but, you know, change for the boys, <laughs> okay? And uh, I brought in two people, okay? Many, many people thought, oh, yeah, yeah, you made that kind of money because you had 20,000 people in another network, blah, blah, blah. No, no. I, I started from scratch, okay? And, and I ran into Ferdy. He was a friend of mine. And, you know, later on, two, three months later, I asked Ferdy. I said, Ferdy, I mean, 
Two days after that, I met with Ferdy and I showed him the plan. I showed him the business. You know, we met in a coffee shop uh, near the escalator where we first met. And I sat down. We were having a cup of coffee in this French bakery. And, and I got the, you know, the, what do you call that? The, the, the placemat, the paper placemat. You know, I turned it over, okay, and I started showing him the business plan, okay? And uh, the more he got excited, okay? He couldn't sleep, okay? So he came in. But I asked him two, three months later, Ferdy, uh, you know, why, how come I didn't even explain the business to you and you said, you know, you wanted in? He goes, because I know you. I know that you take this business very seriously. And I know that if you've joined a business that you've examined it, you've looked at it, you know, you, in other words, he trusts what I say. That's the bottom line. Okay, now everybody has a circle of influence, right? right. Uh, you don't sound convinced. <laughs> you may not, I see, I always talk about the two people that said yes, and I made all of this money, okay, because I only had two directs. Believe it or not, I had only two directs, okay? Ferdy on my left side and my cousin Odette on my right side. Okay, the first month earned about 15 plus, the next month about 26, 27, the next month about 32, still with only two directs. Okay, so you don't need a lot, but I don't talk about the 40 or 50 people that told me I was nuts, that I was crazy, that I was chasing after the proverbial pot at the end of the rainbow. I don't talk about those people, okay, because there were. There were 40 or 50 people that told me I was nuts. I had one lady, okay, and my dad knows this lady, <laughs> who, who literally laughed me out of her office. Okay, she, 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 she screamed at me, she was angry, she's laughing at me, she laughed me out of her office. Okay, I mean, that's how, that's how bad, and, I, and of course, just like you guys, I was extremely, extremely uh, discouraged. I was demotivated. Oh, I'm going to make all of this money. I've only brought in my cousin. And, for, and I was very, very depressed. I got depressed. Yes, I do, do get depressed. Some people, Joe, you get depressed? Yes, I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm just like you guys. Of course, two hours later, I wasn't depressed anymore. <laughs> okay. uh, but anyway, that, I, I used to think that it was such a, such a big blow to my career in this business. I didn't realize that it was, that it was a blessing in disguise. Okay? That all these people turned me down. Okay? I'll explain that in the second paradigm shift. Okay, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is your friends, your relatives and colleagues will join you in the business not because of Gold Quest, not because of GQI, but because of you. You see what I'm saying? They will join because of you, because of your influence over them. Now, you may not be influence, uh, you may not be able to influence 50, 60, 100 people, but for sure, for sure, you'll be able to influence two, Excuse me, two, three, four, five people. Correct? Most people have a circle of influence of about what? Some people say 10, some people say 20, some people say 5. I think 3 people is a safe amount. Correct? Or a safe number. How many will agree that most people have a circle of influence of between 3 to 5 people? That's a conservative uh, figure, correct? Okay, let's, let's, let's say four, okay? Let's say four. Will everybody agree that that's a pretty safe number? You may not be able to go out, you know, and, and ask and, and convince 100 people to join you in, in this business that we call Gold Quest. But two, three, four, five, I think that's a number that most people can deal with, right? So let's, deal, let's talk about that number, okay? Like I said, you may not be able to convince 100 individuals in your GQI business. However, two, three, four, five people, I think, is uh, not, not too much of a task. Okay, how many people in this room think, okay, that they can be successful in inviting and, and, and you know, referring three, four, five people to this business? That's easy because most of you have done it already. How many have done that already? How many are still doing it? Because we have people that are new. Okay. But, but you also feel that two, three, four is okay. Okay. Because look what happens. If you just use your circle of influence, okay, this is you. Okay. Again, you may not know 10,000 people. You may not have a circle of influence. But for sure, your brother, okay, who's looking for a new business. You have a colleague. 
you know, whose wife is pregnant and is looking for, for, uh, for you know, additional income, you know, to support his future family. Then you have uh, another office mate, you know, who's thinking of relocating and he needs a new business, okay? Just four, two, three, four, five people. Now these four people, these four people, will they also have their circle of influence? Yes. They will also have two, three, four people that will trust them, right? And these people will come into GQI as a business not because of you, but because of them, because of their influence, okay? Then pretty soon, they start growing. If you just sit down and busy yourself with helping them bring in their circle of influence, what happens now? Now you have an organization, right? Now it's starting to build. Does it make a difference to these people, uh, to the computer, okay? Does it make a difference that these people are not your directs? Doesn't make a difference, right? Because the GQI uh, system does not consider that. All the GQI computer system realizes is that, hey, this guy's left and right is building, correct? Now, if, if there was a premium for direct and indirect, then this strategy doesn't work. If you have, let's say, five and five direct referrals, I mean, you personally brought in these five, okay, and you get $800, but if you get five and five and they're all indirect and they, you only get $400, then, like I said, this doesn't work. But there is no premium for direct or indirect referral. The computer doesn't care. As long as you have five on the left and five on the right, how much do you get? US 400. US 400. So if the computer doesn't care, why should you care? Does it make a difference that all these people came in uh, because of, they were in the circle of influence of somebody else? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't distinguish between a direct referral and an indirect referral. Okay? So if it doesn't make a difference to the computer, it shouldn't make a difference to you. Okay? If you just busy yourself with assisting, your five, bring in their five, and bring in their five, etc., etc. If you just busy yourself with that, okay, your organization will grow and you will prosper financially. Okay? Let's make it very clear. Because many, many times, people have the thought that, oh, I'm going to purchase a coin, okay, and I'm going to bring in ten. How many thought that way in the beginning? In fact, many, many articles that I've read Okay, not just in this country, but many, they think that you have to bring in the five by yourself. But that's not so. It doesn't make a difference. Whether you get five that are your directs, the green represents your personal direct referrals. Okay, how much do you get? If, you're not, if your organization looked like this, 400. But if you have indirects that came in five and five, how much is that worth to you? $400. It's the same thing. Okay, it doesn't make a difference. The mistake that most people make after bringing in their quote unquote four, okay, there's one really big, see, this came, this came about because one time I was in Singapore conducting a training and somebody came up to me and during the training, he kept asking, oh, you know, I've been rejected so many times, oh, everybody's giving me their objections, oh, this and that. Finally, after the training, I went to him, okay, and I said, you know, sir, I'm gonna be here for the next two or three days Okay, I took pity on him and I said, you know, can I help you go out and get your left and right? You know, I'll help you. And he goes, no, 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 no. I already have my left and right. I said, you do? Yeah, yeah, I have two on my left and three on my right. So I said, well, what's the problem? You know, but I've talked to 50, 60, 70 people over the last four or five days and they all turned me down. And that's when it got me thinking. This guy is approaching it wrong. What happened now is those two, three, five people, okay, that, that he was talking about, he just basically left them alone. What he did is he went out and he tried to bring in a hundred people by himself. And they usually end up just neglecting. They go out and try and refer a hundred more people by themselves. That's the mistake that this guy was making. Okay, and that's why he was failing. He was getting so discouraged. So what happened? I said, what happened to your, your two on the left and three on? And he goes, what do you mean? I don't know. They're supposed to go out and refer. They're supposed to go out and make money for me. That was this guy's uh, mentality. Is that the way to make money in this business? <laughs> so what happens is 
usually they end up not continuing in the business, right? Because somebody brings them in and then leaves them alone and that's it. They know nothing about the business. They've never been trained. They've never been caddied. And they end up just getting discouraged and not continuing in the business, which is something that we're going to be taking up a little bit later. You know, why do, why do people drop out? Why, why do people who are, who are otherwise very excited about doing this business eventually end up dropping out of the business? Usually it's because they don't have support. Okay? So they end up not continuing in the business. What you must realize is that you must be patient. You're not going to be able to bring in half of Singapore or half of KL by yourself. Okay? The sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be. Remember, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Okay, this is not something where you make money instantly, you know, your first day or your first week. Start setting a culture of encouraging others to assist their directs in referring their circle of influence. You see what I'm saying? That's where building an organization, that's how building an organization starts. It starts by you helping them. See, what happened was, Ferdy came in, right? Now he calls me up the next day. Okay, and says, Joe, I have a group of people I'd like to, to talk to. Can you, can you meet with me? Okay, because I don't know how to present it the way you do. So I said, yeah, sure, what time? Tuesday, 7 o'clock, I remember the date. So we met in Pizza Hut on Ortigas in the Philippines. Okay, we met at Pizza Hut, and uh, Ferdy was there with a s small group, about three or four people. One of them was Dave Trinidad. To this day, I'm so thankful to God <laughs> that Dave Trinidad was there. I, I didn't know Dave Trinidad, okay? But does it make, did it make a difference to the computer? No. So I sat there, showed the business, okay? And uh, Dave took, took one look. Okay, how do we do this? How, how do we start this business? I'm like, wow, this is my kind of guy, <laughs> okay? And then on my cousin, on the other hand, she said, Joe, I'm having some friends over, come to the house. Okay, can you, uh, can you help me present it to them? I said, yeah, just make sure there's a whiteboard. Okay, and she didn't have a whiteboard. Okay, so what we did is we took, uh, uh, you know, the brown paper, the big sheets of, we just pasted it on the wall. You know, with, with tape and you know, da -da 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 -da, when I ran out of space, da -da 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 -da, when I ran out of space. And one of the guys in there was T.G. Quintanar. And then T.G. Quintanar asked me to help present in his house to some of his friends. And then another presentation, then came in Rico Uy. And then Rico Uy came in the same time with Patrick Zuniga. You see what I'm trying to say? I didn't know these people. But all I did was just kept helping them bring in their two or three. See? Had I left them alone, do you think they would have, they would have prospered? Maybe yes, but in all probability, probably not. Okay, because the people need support. The only way you can start this culture is to do it yourself. Don't expect to bring in one person on your left, another person on your right, and you go, 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 you make money for me. You go, 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 make money for me. <laughs> but sadly, many, many people have that mentality. I brought you in. You're supposed to bring in me all your clan. What about you? You're supposed to bring in your whole school. I thought you were a good guy. <laughs> That's not the way to make money in this business. And if you start that kind of culture, you know why that's so dangerous? If that's the way you are, how do you think they're going to treat their leaders in their organization? They're going to treat them exactly the same way. But, if you busy yourself helping out these people, how are they going to treat their customers? Exactly the same way. And that's the reason why this paradigm shift, number one, is so important because it sets the tone. It sets the tone for your culture in your organization. The only way you can start this culture is to do it yourself. Help others bring in their circle of influence. The numbers will come later. Okay, can you imagine if this is you and you bring in your four, right? Now, how long will that take? If you, with the help of the leaders up in your organization, really uh, decide to spend time in bringing in your circle of influence, how long will it take? Somebody says one week. Somebody said two days. 
One month, two months, however long, huh? Four months. Four months. That's very long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say one month. Let's say two months. Okay? Is, is that acceptable to everyone? Two months to bring in four people within your circle of influence. Not by yourself, but with the help of your leaders. Right? Now these four will also have their circle of influence. Right? These guys aren't hermits. They don't live up in a cave up in them, them hills up there. Right? They also have a circle of influence. They also have friends, relatives, and cousins. Everybody has a circle of influence. See, for this business to work, you have to make it work with something that everybody has. And everybody has a circle of influence. If you don't have a circle of influence of two or three or four people, people who believe you, people who trust what you say, then this is the wrong seminar. <laughs> then you should be attending another. If you can't get two, three, four people to believe what you say, and can bring home the integrity with which you explain something to them, then you're attending the wrong seminar. <laughs> but, remember, everybody has a circle of two, three, four, five people of influence over them. Now these four will have also two, three, four, five people under them, correct? So now, if you just help the four bring in their four, now you have 20 in your organization. Do you know these 16 people? Does it make a difference if you know them? Doesn't make any difference. Now these 16 will have a circle of influence of four. Will you be alone in assisting these 16? Will not the four help you out? It depends. If you help them out, if you took time out to help them, then they probably will help you too. But if you just left them alone, they probably won't help you enlarge your organization. Now these 16, uh, these 64, are they... Are they hermits? No, they also have friends, relatives, colleagues. When the 64 bring in, then you have 256 coming in. Again, do you know these people? Doesn't make a difference to the computer whether you know them or not. Then the 64 have a circle of influence of two, three, four, five people. Now you have a, a thousand coming in. A thousand people you don't know, but your organization helped bring them in help refer them into this business. That's how you make money in this business. Teach everyone to work with their circle of influence. The first thing is accept it here in your heart. Okay, realize that you need to work with your circle of influence and finally teach them the same thing. If you have people under you who think, oh, this guy is the president of this organization, oh, this guy is the minister of this, or this guy is a senator in this province, tell him, wait, 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 that's not the way we're going to do it here. Let's work with your circle of influence of about four or five. Then we will work with their circle of influence. Teach it. Remember, this is a business of impartation. Okay, the sooner you can get them with that mindset, the sooner they can teach their leaders also. And the big numbers will come later. I guarantee you, if you do it right, the big numbers, the sales, the volumes, the big checks, okay, this will only be a byproduct, okay, of the way you train and set the mindset in with your leaders, okay? The, the numbers will come later. Okay, now we go to paradigm shift number two, okay? We only have two, so don't worry too much. Human nature is to think only of three individuals, okay? That's the way we were brought up, and again, that's human nature. Me, myself, and I, <laughs> okay? Since, I mean, have you ever wondered, you put two kids, two two-year-olds two in a room with one million toys, and they'll fight about the same one. <laughs> have you ever wondered that? <laughs> you have two kids in a room, and they have 10 million toys, and they fight about the same one. It's human nature. I'm not trying to offend anyone. Please, please don't, you know, Joe, you know, saying we're selfish. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's human nature to think about me, myself, and I. When you're a student in school, to, to illustrate my point a little bit, do you study hard for an examination, and then after studying for two, three weeks, and taking the exam and submitting, do you submit it with your classmate's name on it? 
No, you put your name on it. <laughs> if you know you did bad on the test, then maybe you want to put your classmate's name on it, right? But no, you want the grade. You want the passing grade. You want the high mark. In the corporate world, you don't work on a project, then give credit to your colleague because you want the promotion yourself, right? You don't work on a project, get everything in, you know, the loan pushes through or whatever, and say, no, I didn't do it, Harun did. No, no, in the corporate world, no, it's in my report. This was my project, blah, blah, blah. Why? So that you get the promotion. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, let's face it. In this world, we were brought up in an environment where success and financial compensation is determined by getting credits for your work, your volume, your efforts. That's the way we were trained. That's the, that's the society that we grow up in. Whether we admit it or not, <laughs> There's some people that will admit it, and there's some people, you know, that will say, no, I only think of others. Well, then why do you think of others? Because it makes me feel good. So you're st <laughs> the benefit ultimately still ends up going to you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's human nature. Okay, which now brings us to the classic WIFN. <laughs> How many know what that means? with them. <laughs> What's in it for me? <laughs> My mom always used to tell me that as a teenager growing up. As long as you build your business that caters to this, in other words, you know, to someone, what's in it for him? Then you're going to make money. If you want to make money in this business, paradigm shift number two. Forget about yourself. If you want to make money in this business, forget about yourself. Think only of your organization. Think only of your leaders. If you spent all your time helping those under you in your organization, what do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? If I spent eight hours every day Helping Harun, you know, bring in his directs and helping his directs bring in their directs and then we start helping out and bring in their... What do you think will happen? Harun starts to earn money. His network starts to earn money. His organization starts to earn money. They would earn more. Then they'd be more enthusiastic about building the business. Let me tell you, if you have somebody that you refer to this business, and after two, three months, they haven't, they haven't even qualified for their coin, or they haven't had their first step yet, what's going to happen? Do you think they're going to be excited? No, they're going to be really discouraged about the business. You want them to get excited. You want people to be excited under you. That's why, I, remember, I was telling you earlier, I thought when these 40, 50 people told me no, that that's it, I'm not going to make money in this business. But I was wrong. And, I, and like I said, I took it, it happened to be a blessing in disguise instead of a curse. Because now, can you imagine if these 40, 50 people said yes, can you imagine taking care of 40 or 50 people? <laughs> because only Ferdy and my cousin, I thank God that my, that my cousin and Ferdy were the only two people that said yes. Because now I had eight, nine, ten hours a day dedicated to just making sure that they, that they earn. And let me tell you, Ferdy was doing very, very well in another company. Okay, he was, he was earning the, the equivalent of about maybe three, four thousand, five thousand a, a month, US, with another company. Dave, the same thing. Dave was earning about nine, eight, ten thousand a month with another company. Okay. So of course they were giving more time for that company. So what I did is I told myself I'm going to make sure that they earn so much money in this business that they eat, sleep, breathe, dream, think Gold Quest. <laughs> and I spent eight, nine, ten hours a day helping them out. And after a while, you know, Ferdy would call me, because let me tell you, my phone was ringing off the hook. <laughs> I'd wake up in the morning, 7, 7.30, Joe, you know, we have this group, can you come? Okay, fine. Joe, we have this group, let's go. Joe, you know, this group wants to bring in their group, let's go. 
And because I was open to them, they kept calling me. After a while, I was spending 10, 11, 12 hours a day. And I said, Ferdy, Dave, you know, this organization's growing. You know, can you do some presentations here so that I can go and present over? Oh, no, 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 we can't. We said, why not? And this is, this is a true story. Because we, we, that company said, if we don't stop doing this business, they're going to terminate us. And they were saying, Joe, this is still $5,000 a month. This is still $10,000. I can't say, you know, I can't just say goodbye to that. And that's when I decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make these guys earn so much money <laughs> that they're going to eat, sleep, breathe, dream, breathe, think, gold quest. And I spent all eight, nine, ten hours a day. And not just for the, and they also the organizations on, on the other side. On the second month, Dave earned about 18,000 U.S., Ferdy earned about 10,000 U.S. or 9,000 U.S. on his second month. <laughs> you know what they told the owner of that company? You know, in a letter, respectfully, sir, you know, if you want to terminate us, terminate us. <laughs> yeah. But we're not going to stop doing this business because what took us three years to do here, we did in two months. <laughs> now, would you like to have leaders in your organization with that kind of mentality? Well, then what are you doing to deserve it? Spend time with them. The more money they earn, the more excited they get. The more excited they get about the business, they will take it more seriously. Do you think Ferdy and Dave took a step of faith when they said, sir, go ahead, terminate us, but we're not going to stop doing this business? Was that a step of faith for them? Were they taking the business seriously? Why? Because that's where the rice bowl was coming from. If you want people in your organization to take this business more seriously, if you want them to spend more time, if you want them to open themselves up to more training, make it worth their time. Make it worth their while to do so. Anyway, in the long run, who does it benefit? When you have people that are committed, that are, that are all out for this business, that do this business on a full-time basis, who does it benefit? You. It benefits you. I was, I was in shock when I first got my check. I'm, I'm serious. I knew I was going to make money in this business. When I first sat down in the business plan and uh, listened to the business plan, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. <laughs> but when I first came in, I said, okay, I, I purchased a nine header, okay, in the beginning. I don't recommend that's what you do, okay. There was my first time to be involved in this business. I didn't know all the strategies, okay. Uh, I, so I, if I would have known then what I know now about the business, I would have just done a three header. Because you can open under, right. We'll take that up during the strategy sessions. And it wasn't, it wasn't something that, that, uh, that uh, came easy. My wife was, how many met my wife here last night? She's not here now, so we can talk about her. But it's just our secret, okay? Just us and the people who buy this tape. <laughs> but my wife was really, oh, wow, another one of these, I don't want to join. Nah, 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 nah. How much do we have? Nine header? Oh my God. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, you see her, she's, you know, sweet and nice. You should see her when she's, <laughs> you should see her on the golf course. She turns into a completely different personality. But she was, ah, I don't want to have anything to do with that business. That's your business. I refuse any ownership of that business. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I was like, no, you know, I'm going to do this, blah, blah, blah. So I, you know, put in my draft, started doing the business. Two weeks later, I was in Cebu. Not Cebu, but Cebu. It's in the, in the Philippines. Doing the business. And, you know, I, I, we weren't fighting anymore. Okay? We like to try and end our fights uh, before we go to sleep at night. Doesn't always work, but we try. <laughs> but anyway, we weren't fighting. And I was, you know, every night when I'm away, I'm calling her. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, hey, Ba, guess what? We, we got a FedEx package today. Really? What was in it? Our coins. <laughs> I was like... You, you, mean, you mean my coins? Yeah, 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 our coins. <laughs> and also our check. You, you, mean, you mean my check? Yeah, 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 our check. <laughs> when I came back to Manila, she was with her friends, and oh, you should see our new business. 
And I was like, our new business? I thought this was my business. <laughs> but that's the way it is. How many had a similar experience when they were starting the business? You mean my wife said the same thing to you? <laughs> no, no. What I mean is, when you start this business, nobody's with you. Right? No, I mean, you have so many doomsday prophets, right? Explaining to you how you're going to fall flat on your face. Right? Of course, two, three, four months later, you're making twice as much as they are. <laughs> But then that's when everybody starts to take note, which is, okay, this is not on the, the PowerPoint, but I'd like to make this point. Always remember, okay, you and, and also the people that are uh, your leaders in your organization, always remember to explain to them, the hardest part about this business is the beginning. You will have a very, very hard time in the beginning because nobody will believe you. Can you imagine walking up to somebody and saying, hey, bud, let me show you how to make $20,000 a week. What do most people say? Yeah, who do I have to kill? <laughs> Which bank do I have to rob? Because most people don't have even the imagination, you know what I'm saying? To, that they will ever be earning that much. Can you imagine what a billion dollars looks like? <laughs> most I mean, I, I tried it once. I counted it. A billion dollars, okay, you can spend one million dollars a day, every day, okay, and the women will love this, even Sundays, okay, <laughs> actually I'd, I'd like it too, <laughs> you can spend a million dollars every day, including Sundays, for almost three years, before you use up one billion, <laughs> And Bill Gates has like, what, 60, 70, 80, 90, depending on the stock market prices. <laughs> but he has a lot. But can you imagine having 60 billion US dollars? Most people cannot. That's what I'm saying. Most people can't even imagine in their minds somebody pulling in a check of $20,000 a week. And that's the reason why people reject you. They're not rejecting you because of you. They're rejecting you because basically what they're telling them, telling you and themselves is how dare you think that you're above us? How dare you think that you can achieve something that most of us can't even imagine? That's what they're saying no to. Remember we were talking last night about courage? Because it does take courage to sit here in your room, write down your dreams and your visions and your compelling reasons and burning desires and say, I will work hard to get this. It takes courage because it hurts when you don't get it. So people, instead of hurting themselves, they'd rather say, no, it doesn't exist. That's why people say no. That's why people give you a hard time when you're starting. But once you start earning money, is it still hard? You think Dave Trinidad, or Ronnie Wong, or, or, or Marie Glenn, or Ferdi Tolentino, or Anan, or Patman, or Tony Kong, do you think they have a hard time explaining to people that this business works? No, because, does it work? Yes, look. See that subdivision? I just bought it with my earnings. No, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> but it'll get to that. Oh, you get, sh <laughs> you get shocked when you find out how much people have taken home because of this business. If I told you, you guys wouldn't believe <laughs> how much the serious people in this business have taken home. You think about it. 10,000 a week. Now after two, three months, it's 15,000 a week. After two, three months, it's 20,000 a week. Do some arithmetic. What do you come out with? A lot. <laughs> so it pays to take this business seriously. But anyway, can you imagine Having Dave Trinidad earning $20,000 a week on one side, right? And then you have, let's say, T.G. Quintana earning $10,000 a week on another side. What happens? Never mind you. What happens to them? They become very, very serious about the business. They make sure they're fully trained. They make sure they train their people. You see what I'm saying? 
That's the way to make money this business. Forget about yourself. And that's what I meant earlier. I was very shocked when I got my check because all, all, uh, all I was thinking about was helping them build. I was involved with another company uh, where at every end of the month, you know how it is in this, every, usually it's end of the month, you check everybody's volumes and stuff like that. <laughs> and every end of the month, I would go to the accounting department and ask, how much did this guy earn? And I'm talking about all my, all my uh, downlines, because this was an MLM company, you know, and it, these are all my downlines. And I was asked, how much did this person make? How much did this person make? And every month, I would come and ask how much they made, how much they made. And finally, after two, three months, the president of that company pulled me aside and said, Joe, how come you're only asking about, you never ask about, uh, about your check? And I said, you know, it's inevitable. If these people make money, I will make money. And the only way I will make money is if I help them make money. In other words, I'm asking you to do something that I have done and I know it works. Just make sure they earn money. Can you imagine having five on your left and five on your right, all of them are millionaires? <laughs> what about you? What happens to you? <laughs> So will you benefit by helping making these people make millionaires, make millions? Yes, you will benefit. The only way you can earn big bucks is to help others earn big bucks. Don't gauge your success in this business by the size of your checks. You know what I'm saying? Gaze your success by the size of your leader's checks. The more checks they have, the bigger checks they have, the more they, seriously they take the business. Let me make it clear. Let's say you have an organization that you're just starting and you bring in on your left, Tom, and then on your right you bring in Bob. Oop, Jeff. I forgot, Bob joined the other company. Okay, <laughs> Jeff was the one who joined us. <laughs> if Tom on the left is earning $400 a month and Jeff on the right is earning $10,000 a month, okay, a slight difference there, of only about $9,600. <laughs> who do you think would consider doing the business more seriously? Boy, we're really focused on dollars here. We forgot the guy's name. <laughs> His name is Jeff, guys. <laughs> Who do you think would take it more seriously? Yeah. Jeff. He's the one that will take this business seriously. He's the one that will make sure he gets all the books, he gets all the tapes, he attends all the meetings. Those are the kind of leaders you want. Who do you think will consider doing this business full time? Wouldn't you want to have an organization of all full-time questers? Yes. Now, if he's making 5,000 US dollars a month in the current uh, vocation that he's in, and he's earning $400 a week, or $400 a month with GoldQuest, which one do you think he'll take more seriously? Job. Of course, job. It could be a job, it could be a business, it could be a whatever. You see what I'm saying? But if he's earning $5,000 a month here, right? And he, over here on the other side, he's earning $20,000 a month. Which do you think he'll take more seriously? This one. So if you, want to take, if you want your leaders to take this business more seri seriously, it's up to you. It's up to you. You have to make it uh, profitable for them to take this business more seriously. And as a byproduct of this effort, who makes money? You do. I remember one time Dave Trinidad uh, took me out to dinner, Dave and Ferdy, and, and Chit, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Bob, all the leaders in his organization, they took, which is really nice, okay, because I remember when you were first starting, you know, of course, you know, you have meetings, and you meet in restaurants, and, you know, everybody, oh, when the bill comes, you know, everybody, you know, oh, no, no, you, everybody's pulling out, you know, on Dutch Street, you know, we call it KKB in my, in, in my country, Kanya Kanyang Bayad for the Filipinos, <laughs> which means KK, which means Dutch Street. But nowadays, you know, it's all, no, no, let me take the bill. Uh -huh. No, 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 Joe, let me take the bill. Okay, fine, go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, I remember that during that dinner, Dave goes, you know, Joe, 
I can't think of a better way to make money. All I do is help people make money. And the more money they make, the more money I make. I can't think of anything more fulfilling financially. And that's the attitude that you should have. That's the attitude that you should have. In review, paradigm number one, paradigm shift number one, learn how to work with your circle of influence. You don't seem very convinced. You must have had a very big lunch. <laughs> learn how to work with your circle of influence and teach others to work with their circle of influence. Number two, forget about yourself and help others. If you want to make money in this business, help others. Now part two is how to help. <laughs> okay, I'm going to help these people. What do I help them with? Okay, what am I going to help people with? Because you have to have a specific formula. Okay, when you train, when you train a dog, for example, I'm not saying that your leaders are dogs. Okay, I want to be very clear on that. <laughs> when you train a dog, okay, because, see, you have to understand, there's a difference between teaching and training. Okay? You don't teach a dog how to sit. You don't just say, sit, 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 and then he just sit. No. Training is you have to sit down with him. How many times do you have to, you know, you have to pull up and, you know, you know what I'm saying? How many have ever done that before? I have never succeeded. I have never succeeded in making a dog sit. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> You know, I've read all the books, but it never, I've never gone past sit. Forget about roll over. <laughs> I haven't even attempted that. But anyway, I know, I know what to do. I just can't do it. But you have to do it over, you know, over and over again. Over and over and they'll fail. The failure part, I know. <laughs> but then, when they succeed, you know, there's the affirmation. There's the, in other words, there's a system. And that's training. Training is not just telling them once. Training is repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating until finally it becomes second nature. Do you ever wonder why these martial artists, you know, 1,000 times, Because I used to wonder before. Why? Because during crisis times, when you have to defend yourself, it comes out, you don't even think about it anymore. That's the reason for repetition, and that's training. And why do you think during the past two days, we just take up a few points? <laughs> now, we're going to take up how, what to do, what's that process, okay? First of all, when you refer a friend or a relative, okay, commit to assisting them to bring in others. Okay, commit yourself to it. We just talked about it. Forget about yourself and help others. One of the nice things about this business, however, is if you have a friend or somebody who comes in way, way below you, okay, does that mean you won't help them out anymore? If this guy, your friend in blue, never, whether he's two generations away from you or 50 generations away from you, okay, if this guy brought in Dave Trinidad, or Ronnie Wong, or Tony Kong, or Ranjit Singh, would you guys still benefit? Okay, so commit yourself to helping those people uh, under you in your organization. Commit yourself to it. Because you'll never know. When I brought in Ferdy, I didn't know he was going to bring in Dave. When I brought in my cousin, I didn't know that T he was going to bring in TG. And the TG was going to bring in Rico, and Rico was going to bring in Patrick. I thank God for it. <laughs> and I'm still thankful for it, but I didn't know that. So commit yourself to assisting them in bringing in others. That's the reason why you have to know how to present the business properly. You can't just tell them, yeah, 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 just bring them to the office and let them. No, you go yourself. Let me tell you this, folks. The company, okay, both V-Team and GoldQuest spend a lot of time and efforts in helping. V team, we have a lot of presentations, a lot of business opportunity meetings. Use them. But don't let that be your only source. Because uh, let me tell you, the best way to bring somebody in is one-on-one. -on -one. That's the best way. Either one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two or, one or two of you coming in, talking to his friend. That's the best way. That's the best way. Because you can tailor-make your presentation. 
You see what I'm saying? If this guy, let's say, is a salesman, you can present the business to him and show him the, the advantages of this business as opposed to sales. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying sales is a bad profession. Please don't think that. But the only problem I have with sales is that when you're not selling, you're not earning. Through this business, you're able to set up an organization, a business organization, without the usual headaches or cap of capital requirement and still have business income. If you build properly, even if you, don't, uh, even if you take a vacation for one month, you still earn money. In sales, you don't get that. See, you can sit down. See, but if you're talking to a big group like this, you can't just sit down and talk about sales. But if you're talking to a salesman, you can tell him, with me helping you, we'll build an organization. If you're talking, let's say, to a lawyer. How many lawyers were here? Same thing. A lawyer only makes when he's lawyering or, <laughs> or practicing. Right? If you're talking to an employee, what do you talk about? You talk about the, the demands of the job, you know, the, the pressures, and the fact that the company owns you <laughs> for eight, nine, ten hours a day. The company owns you. So here you talk about the obvious benefits, which are the exact, here you own your time. Yeah, but Joe, you said you were working 10, 12, 11, 12 hour days when you started. Yes, that's true. But that was my choice. You see what I'm saying? It's my choice. I say if I want to work 15 hours today. I say if I only want to work 4 hours today. And Joe, you were making money before, but you only started playing golf in December because I quit playing golf. <laughs> and I only started playing, yeah, but it was my choice to quit. Nobody told me, Joe, you can't play. You see what I'm trying to say? Choice. It's about, why do you think in our brochure we put freedom of choice? Because that's what this business is about. Anyway, I don't want to recruit you guys. You guys are all involved in the business. I don't want to bring you in anymore. <laughs> but you see what I'm trying to say? The best way to present is to sit down one-on-one. -on -one. That's why you have to commit. But when you have a friend or a relative that comes in, you, you look at him and say, Harun, don't talk to anybody first. <laughs> That's one of the first few things you're going to have to learn in caddying. Commit yourself to them in bringing in others. And when they come in, what happens to, to, to him? He gets excited. Wow! Because the business plan that was shown to him, you know, the feasibility plan, if you bring in two and they bring in two, now they can see it's starting to happen. It's not a theory anymore.